All right, Boker Tov, everybody. Today's daf is Samach Tet, um, and we uh, pick up at the top. And what we have is we had a Mishnah, which basically said when you do Malika, right, This is there's this like uh, bizarre, ironic sort of reality that the way you slaughter the bird for the bird sacrifice, Malika, for the back of the neck, under any other circumstances would be considered like a, in, not even a fita, would be like just making it into an avela and so on. But because it's in the context of the sacrifice, that's what makes it kosher. So then the question becomes, the Gemara wants to sort of look at, when would it be an avela? And the, as I said the other day, the way to look for this is not to ask, when is it us to eat? Because this might be us to eat because it's an ola. But when does it cause tuma when you swallow it, which is the sign of a bird that's an avela? Okay, and um, so it basically said, if you have the right act, malika, if you have it on the right object, a sanctified bird, and if you have it in the right place in the Beit Mikdash, then it will not be an avela, even if the wrong people do it. You do it with your left hand, you do it at night, and then we're going to discuss how wrong is the person, okay? But anyway, but even if there's something pasul about the way it's done, it's not going to be an avela. If, however, any one of those components is missing, okay, it was done with a knife, so it wasn't done malika with the fingernail of the Kohen, so it's the wrong act. Or it was done on the wrong object. It was done on something not sanctified. It was done on something that wasn't even, as we saw in a bright and Gemara, that wasn't even a pigeon or a turtle dove. Okay, it was too young, or it was missing a limb. Okay, or it was done in the wrong place. It was done on a outside of the Beit Hamikdash. Any of those things, it will be a nevela. Okay, because ultimately, malika? ultimately, you're doing a malika. However, one minute, if you did an act of shrita, not an act of malika, even if it's a shrita that you shouldn't be doing because it's on a bird sacrifice or some other type of a reason why you shouldn't be doing shrita, where the normal thing this would demand is malika. If it's a shrita, it's also not an avela. So it's an avela if it's a non-shrita, a malika, but somehow the wrong act, on the wrong object, or in the wrong place. But that was the basic point of the Mishnah. And the Gemara introduced the debate of Rav and Rabbi Yochanan, what if a czar does it, a non kohen does it? Now, one way to conceptualize that is, and because the language in the Gemara and the Mishnah at the end was not what I said, act, object, place. The language in the Mishnah at the end was, is it psulo bakodesh or not psulo bakodesh? How much is this something that sort of like is the problem is relevant to this world of the Beit HaMikdash or something that somehow precedes it, which is a little bigger abstraction and sometimes hard to get your exact handle on. But anyway, so one way to conceptualize the debate of Rav and Yochan, Rav says a czar, um, um, does make it in the Vela, Rabbi Yochan says it does not, is like, how out of base is a czar? Like, it's not like Psula Bakodesh. How much is it completely not relevant to the world of, you know, of Korbanot, that therefore it's considered completely Pasul, it's like it was out of bounds. Okay, and then that had to do with some type of a question about a czar out of Bama and other types of questions, and a czar doing Shrita, and how out of bounds is a czar. Um, but the other way, which I think is even the simpler way, is because we know that Malika is done with the finger of the Kohen, the thumb of the Kohen, maybe a czar, the problem isn't that he's a czar as much as the problem is, is that it was the wrong object, the wrong act, meaning the act is with the same way if you do it with a knife, you did the wrong act. If you did it with the thumb of a non-Kohen, that's like doing it with a knife. It's like doing it with, it's doing the wrong act. It's using the wrong thing to do the act of the Malikha. So anyway, that is the debate of Rav and Rav Yochanan. It does a czar make it nevela or not, not make it nevela? Is it because a czar is so out of bounds? It's considered completely irrelevant to this world and therefore it's like just you stomped it. You know, it's not like in the, you can't even call it a Malikha of Kachim or because the alternative read is because a czar was actually using the wrong, the wrong, the wrong implement. To do the to do the malika. Another way of testing this question of right how out of bounds something is, which always gets sort of interwoven with this, or you know, is the question about if you put it on the altar, do you have to take it down? And they're similar. That was a type of an issue that some types of things are invalid, but not so out of bounds that um, you know that you, that you would have to take them off the altar. Only things that are like completely irrelevant to this world, completely out of bounds, you know, are things that you would have to take them off of the altar. And in brisker terminology, and the last thing I'll say for review, um, for brisker terminology, you know, the often way they talk it is, is it that it's not the thing itself or is that it's the puzzle thing? Like, is it not a malika at all or is it a malika psula? You know, if it's not a malik at all, right? Like if you sort of talk about using the knife or whatever, then it's completely obviously a different thing and out of bounds. Yes, my what up the aspect of it being the wrong places in Bachutz? So can you infer from there that there were never any Koronot Ha'ofa and Obama? 
Gemara we're going to discuss that. We're going to discuss that in one minute. So now let's resume with the top of Samachtet. Samachtet. So top of Samachtet. Olive. Four lines from the top. Tani Kavasi to Rabbi Yochanan. We taught like Rabbi Yochanan. Malik Malkazar. If a non kohen did it. Malka pasul, pasul, if a pasul coin did it, which, by the way, we haven't explained it on pasul, right? Onain, you know, what about Yoshev? What about Baal Pachoy, who's a Baal Mum? Presumably all of that's included in pasul, okay? Hapigo va no or let's say you had a pigo thought, okay? So the korban became pasul because you had a pigo thought, or you left it over, or it became tame. Now, that's obviously you would think just because you left it over. It's not retroactively going to change its status. So, that's the halacha. Those things are not nevelah. Wait, so, then how so, is, so what? So, tummy was when you touch it? I mean, right? it's tummy, you do become tame. Oh, no, but that's second degree. Tummy means something tummy touched it, so it's not a source of tumah, so whatever. Okay, so anyway, so that's a good point. Anyway, so this is like Rabbi Yochanan. It says that a czar makes it, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not Nivela. We also add it in Pigul, and also we should understand that the word Pasul also includes the other whole category of Kohanim who are Psuli, not because it's a czar. Okay, I'm Rabbi, so that's a nice part of Rabbi Yochanan. I'm Rabbi Yitzhak. Shemati, I heard, Shtayim. The halachot about two different things. Achas um, kmitzazar, achas malikazar. One was all about whether kmitzazar and the other about a malikazar. So the question isn't about nevela. The only thing we could be looking at compared to those two is this other thing, which is related, which is if I put it on the altar, do I have to take it down? That's another way of measuring, right, or another symptom of, right, how much is this completely out of bounds or not completely out of bounds. So I heard a different ruling between whether the Kamitsa was done by a non-Kohen or the Malika was done by a non-Kohen. Um, uh, one of them, if you put it on the altar afterwards, you have to take it down, and the other not. And I don't know which is the one that's more problematic and, the, and that you have to take it down. Now, if you asked me, based on what we just said, I would have said the Malika is more problematic. Okay, it's debated rather than Bjorna, but ultimately the Malika of Azar, as I said, you're using the wrong uh, implement to do the Shechita. You're using a wrong, the, the thumb of a non kohen whereas Kamitsa is just a normal Zar problem. That's what I would have said. The Gemara is going to say the opposite, that, that the Kamitsa of Azar is worse than the Malika of Azar. Let's take a look. Um... Uh, wait, wait. I'm a chizkia. Mistavra makes sense. Kamitsa tereid, Malika lo tereid. Malika doesn't go down. That's like Rabbi Yochanan, like we said. But Kamitsa does. Well, all of a sudden, why would a Kamitsa by a mincha of a czar be more off base than the Malika of a czar? So, my shna Malika, the Yashem Bebama. So, the Murray asked that question. What makes Malika not totally off base if it's done by a non Kohen, a czar? Because a czar can operate on a bama. Right? So we had that discussion yesterday. Is well, somebody who can do it a bum is that relevant for the Beit Hamikdash? But if you're going to say a czar is in bounds, you're going to use the bum as an example that he's in bounds to demonstrate that. So that's true about a malika. So kmitz and ami yashem bama. So okay, you do a kmitz on a bama with a non kohen. A czar is kosher on a bama with with anything. So why again? Why is kmitz worse? So they weren't able to bring all kavanah. Now you'll say no. You don't have kmitz of a czar by Obama because there's an opinion that says they wouldn't bring a mincha on Obama. You know what? Enofos nami Obama. But that opinion, <laughs> they go together. If there's no mincha, there's no ofos because the only thing that we would sort of say is large, you know, is mammals. The amar, the amar of sheishes, because sheishes says with ivri amar yesh mincha Obama, yesh ofos Obama. With ivri amar a mincha, a no a mincha, a ofos. Whatever you're going to say by the mincha, you're going to say by the birds. So again, why is a kmitz Worse, and you can't say that there's no commits of a czar on Obama because if that's your opinion, then there's no Malika of a bird on Obama, of a czar on Obama. So, what makes the commits of a czar more out of bounds than the uh, than the Malika of a czar? So, so the Mars says, <clears throat> in my time, excuse me, I didn't finish the clay before. Zvachim below Menachot, Zvachim below Ofot. When it speaks about uh, outside of the base of Mikdash, and here we're using it's fascinating. Naimad Harsinai is the example of Obama, as the example of shechting things outside the base of Mikdash. Okay, because it says, and it says that they brought their Zvachim Parim Hashem Shlamim. Okay, so if you want to read Zvachim as narrow, right, like the name of our Masech, it's Zvachim, it's things that are Zavuach, that are slaughtered, so bird is is not Zavuach, it's Maluk, Maluk, you know, it's you do Malika. Malakot. Malakot, right, anyway, <laughs> Malakot. Anyway, so if that's the way you read the verse, so fine, they're going to go together. So we're back to our question. Why is Kamitsa of a czar more out of bounds than Malik of a czar? 
Um, so, Ella Ema ain't Kiddush the Kali, the Klisha rate, the Mincha the Bama. No, here's the reason. Because when you bring a Mincha outside the Beit HaMakdash, you don't sanctify it in a Klisha rate, okay? You know, you're just bringing on your local Bama, whatever. You don't, you don't have a Klisha race. So, where, so that's true, the actual, now that is a necessary part of making the mincha fit to be brought, okay? So therefore, or putting it in, let me reframe that. That is a necessary part of bringing the mincha into the sanctified context. So therefore, if a czar is kosher by a mincha on a bama, it's even, it's not only is it because it's a bama, that's not a relevant example to the Beit HaMikdash, it's not even in the full Kedusha context because the Mincha itself wasn't even sanctified in the Klishares. So therefore, sure, that works, but that's like completely irrelevant. That's not a, a discussion that you can use. Ah, you see what you do in the Beit HaMikdash with the czar is not so bad because you do the same thing by a bama. Anyway, it's Tom, we would said before, like, why should you prove anything about a bama? But even if the problem is relevant, okay, something like this, which is not only in a bama, but also the thing that hasn't even been sanctified, okay, that's obviously a completely different phenomenon. And you can't use it to demonstrate something about the meaning of the Kamitz of Azar in the Beit HaMikdash. Whereas by when it comes to the bird, okay, a bird never gets sanctified in a cliche, right? It only gets sanctified verbally. So that what you're doing in a bum is not as different. And since what you're doing in a bum is not as different, and the fact that a czar works in a bama means that a czar actually is not totally out of bounds in the Beit HaMikdash. Okay, so it's basically the same point. We're using the logic of how out of bounds is it, and based on whether you can demonstrate that this thing is ever good in a different context. So the czar is not fully out of bounds because it works on a bama, but Kamitsa of a czar, that's Malik of a czar, but Kamitsa of a czar is fully out of bounds. Don't tell me it works in a bama, what goes on in a bama, what stays She's in a bama. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah. What happens in Vegas State, what goes on in a bama in that context is really not, it's a completely different phenomenon. And you can't connect the dot to that in the Beit HaMikdash, because even the Mincha is not fully sanctified in that context, okay? But we don't even know, that's a debate, right? If it can or it can't. Yeah, be. but that's right. But, was it, but were there but, certain, like, like in other words, like a Chatan, or an Asham, or a yeah. Ola, like, you know, were there certain things that are categorically excluded from Obama? Yeah, I mean, it has to be Davar Hanida, 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 but that's basically free will. Okay, and then there's other things. So you can never do, even if you can do a Malika, it could be an Ola, but not a Chata, then. Right. And we'll discuss all this later. Okay, Malak Pismolo Belayla. So we got through the case about the Psulim, or at least does Psulim include Zar? Interestingly, again, we did not discuss what they're about Onain and Yoshev and so on. Okay, but anyway, presumably those are also included. And now we're getting to the line in the Mishnah that says, it's funny that, to see Smol and Laila as a example or, you know, of Psulim, which is what the Gemara said before, because Lila is not the puzzle person, you know, and small, he also, but Gavra's in puzzle. But that was a line in the Mishnah we weren't sure. Right, before. exactly. But the Gemara at least way, read it, it said, yeah. Anyway, so let's take a look at the Gemara. And anyway, but now we're going to move on to this whole part. I mean, a puzzle would also be like a woman then, right? Would yeah. I mean, well, that's a czar, though, even though Pascal is a czar. But this works. Anyway, now we get to the Shrita issues, you know, and the Pneem and the Chutz issues. We're sort of done with the act and the knife and so on, and then we get to all of this part. Okay, the wrong places. Let's take a look. Maybe, um, meaning this is a brighter that's working in stages. First, how do we know even if the Corban is done properly, maybe it's an Avela, right? Because look, at the end of the day, you did a Malika. So maybe the Torah, you know, allows a Kohen to eat from it, but maybe in terms of it shouldn't lose its status of an Avela. You didn't shaft it properly. That, how can you possibly eat an Avela? Well, Rashi says also, maybe we're talking about an Ola. Okay, but anyway. We can eat an Ola. I understand. So we're not saying, so we're saying is, maybe a normal bird sacrifice should always be seen as an Avela, okay? So you want to say, oh, but, so, so you want to say, oh, but then how would the Kony be allowed yeah. to eat it? So, okay, maybe it's an exception, you know, Kony also gets where shot is. Or you could say that, you know, at least the Ola, which isn't being eaten, maybe that should be seen of as an Avela, because at the end of the day, you didn't do a proper Shrita. That's how do we know? The Shrita the same way. I understand, not the same way. This is Yavdil, the Vol Yavdil. Anyway. How do we know not to give it a status of an Avela, at least for Tum and Tavra? Okay, that's the question. At the end of the day, this logically should be an Avela. So even though it's allowed to be eaten, if it's a Chathos, whatever the case may be, how do you know it's not an Avela for Tuma purposes? Okay? So the Pasuk says, um, the Pasuk says, um, uh, what's the Pasuk? Uh, Rashi, 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 Rashi,
uh, this is talking about a uh, about about a bird. So this is the exact sacrifice point that we learned that a bird is metame when you eat it. Okay. Yikri Yitzayin, hold on. Thank you. So it doesn't say it's a bird. I mean, there's a very strange puzzle. It says if you eat an avela or a trefa, you are tamay. So first of all, it makes you tamay by eating. But it says trefa. But we, all the other evidence is that a trefa is, doesn't cause tumah. So how do you make any sense of this? So the rabbis say it's talking about eating a bird that's an avela. So number one, it's limited to a bird. And number two, Okay, the, and the, the bird only causes tumor when you eat it, but we still have to deal with the word trefa, because the, they say that that only applies to a nivla sa'of, not a trefa sa'of. So let's take a look, or what that was. I'm sorry, so if I eat a regular nivela? The, and you don't um, touch it, then you're not tamay. If you manage to not touch it, it only touches the inside of your mouth, that's like Nagia space of or whatever, so yes, it would not be tamay. You also take so I mean, but normally, I mean, in order to, you know, I, like yeah, cutting exactly, it or anything exactly, before. Exactly, but this only causes tumor when you swallow it. Okay, and that's this pasuk. But it says, so A, what we're not going to discuss is how we know to limit it to a bird. But B, it says, nivela and trefa. Nivela. No, only a real nivela, not this thing that you did malika to. So he says, one minute, hanami nivela he. What do you mean? That was exactly your question. Logically, you would put a bird that you did malika to, even a korban, in the nivela category. How do you know to not put it in that? It says, utrefa. But so how is, so what's the link? Since trefa doesn't literally mean a trefa, a bird that's a trefa does 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 not cause tuma. So what is the link? The link is to tell you the following thing. Of course isur. It has to be like a trefa. And the same way a trefa, when you shecht a trefa, you can't eat the meat. So the only type of an avela that is an, in the nevela category and causes tuma is an avela that the act of sort of slaughtering it or whatever did not make it permissible. But the malik of a bird lets you go ahead and burn it on the altar, right? Let's the carnie eat it if it's a chatas. So since the malika actually makes it kosher in a certain way, that malika cannot make it an avela, which is a logical thing to say anyway. Right, which is why Michael was having such a hard time about the question. Mm -hmm. If the dirt tells you to do it, it's hard to say that it makes it available. But the is saying, logically, that's because it's linked to trefa. So trefa has to be something that actually, when you shechs it, does not make it permissible. Here, the act makes it permissible for the altar, for the kani. It's not going to be an available. Is there any habit okay. to say any of the that is like kind of both, or like some of that makes it worse? We'll see about that at the end of the time. Okay, now, the Gemara says like this. Um, Hevi hamolik. Now, that includes molik. Um, Kotli, hey, I know. Um, okay. uh, one minute. Uh, now, or it should be not heavy, like Avi. Should I, um, should I now say that? Let me just see what's the, what's the here, the Zion, sorry. Avi, right. Avi, should I now include maybe? Let's say you do the malika, but you do it on kachim bachutz, or you do it chulin, but you do it bifnim. Once I said malika doesn't make an available, what about when you do a malika in the wrong place or on the wrong object? So there, hoil the aim isur, using my same logic of is it like a trefa? Here the answer is yes, it is like a trefa. When I do malika of kachim out of the base of mikdash, I don't make it permissible. Conan can't eat it. I can't burn it as a korban. When I do Malika Hulin in the base of Mikdash, I haven't done anything to make it permissible. So only when I do Malika of Kachim in the base of Mikdash, because I've made it permissible, does it go out of the category of Nivela. But when I do it on on, on Hulin in the base of Mikdash or Kachim outside, since the act of Malika in no way made this bird any more permissible, it is going to still be in the category of Nivela. Okay, so that's that right there. And that basically tells us normal Malika isn't an Avela, but the Malika in the wrong place or on the wrong object is an Avela. Now we're, now we've sort of done this. Now we're going to look at the Shita. How do we know Shita, even if it's Chulim Bifnim or Kachim Machutz, 
all right, is kosher. Now, the biggest chiddush probably here would be shchita's chulin bifnim is not such a chiddush, okay? But shchita of a bird korban outside, there you might say, since the Torah mandates that you do malika by a bird korban, maybe shchita for it would be naked nevela. So let's take a look. Tanya idach yachad ei shchita's chulin bifnim, okay? V'kachim bein mi bifnim bein mi bechutz nitame abe tabliya. Maybe that would cause tuma. Tamalama nevela. No, only a real nevela. So the Gemara says, Hanami Nevelahi. But that was your question. Maybe we should call this a Nevelah because maybe the Shechita is the wrong thing to do by a bird korban and makes it a Nevelah. Ela Tamaloma Trefa. Okay, fine. We know the meaning of Nevelah by the juxtaposition to Trefa. What are we going to learn from this? Ma Trefa Shave Bifnim Kibachutz. Of course, Shave Bifnim Kibachutz. It has to be like a trefa. The same mean animal that's a trefa, you can't eat it when you bring it out of it, when you shut it out of the base of and you can't bring it as a korban in the base of So therefore, the only thing that's a nevela is something that the status is the same inside and outside of the base of mikdash. What does this mean? Um, as opposed to these cases. Now, what do you mean as opposed to these cases? Well, let's, the easiest one to see is as opposed to chulin bifnim. When you do chulin out of the Beit HaMikdash, that's, the way, you're, what, right, okay. that's the way you're supposed to do it, right? So it's well, kosher shchita. Yeah. I mean, shchita chulin. If you shout chulin out of the Beit HaMikdash, that's the way you're supposed to do it. So that's good. So inside, okay, it's the wrong place. So you got right place and wrong place, but like a trefa, the status of a trefa, it, it, it equally puzzles inside and outside, that we know. So something that's going to be an evela has to be equally puzzle inside and outside. So don't tell me, oh, a shechita in the Beit HaMikdash should puzzle it. No, if you want it to puzzle it, it has to equally puzzle it out of the Beit HaMikdash. And we know that a shechita of chulin out of the Beit HaMikdash is not, is, is not a problem. So therefore, a shechita of chulin in the Beit HaMikdash is not going to make it an evela. But, what, but you still can eat it, though, right? Right, 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 right because it's a korban that hasn't been brought properly. Okay, but it won't make it an evela. So you got it? What does it mean? You want you... something to make it an evela, it has to operate, it has to be able to make it an Avela both in and out of the base of Mikdash. So since Shita of cooling out of the base of Mikdash doesn't make it an Avela, it's not going to make it an Avela in the base of Mikdash. Okay, now the question is, what about Shita's culture Bachut, right? Because, and Bain 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 So there you should say, well, a bird sacrifice is wrong to do Shita inside or outside. So that doesn't explain why there's a difference there. So maybe that should make it an Avela. So that's what the Gemara said. Let's take a look. Uh, chulin, I get the shritas chulin inside isn't going to make it an avela because shritas chulin outside is totally fine. Okay, ella kachim, but shrita of a bird's korban, I divide the in and out of the base of mikdash. It's the wrong thing to be doing, so that should be making it an avela. That's a good question. Amarav, so Rav says, you know what, you're right. All we learn from this inside outside thing is the chulin. The idea of a shechitas kudshim, how we know that's not an avela, is learned from a different place. I'm a rabbi. Rabbi says, "Im ho ilo shechitas chutz lechayva kares, also ilo letara midei nevela." So Rabbi says like this. You're right. Shechitas chulin, shechitas chulin bifnim is not an avela because shechitas chulin bechutz is the right thing to do. Shechitas kudshim is not an avela, not because bechutz it's the right thing to do, but it's effective bechutz. How do you know Shritas Kudshim is effective by Chutz? Because even though in, in the base of Mikdash, the only thing that's kosher by a bird sacrifice is Malika, the Gemara learns from another way that to be over and Chayev for bringing a korban out of the base of Mikdash, if you did Shrita on a bird that was a korban, you'd also be Chayev for bringing a korban out of the base of Mikdash. Okay, got it? So Shrita on a bird korban in the base of Mikdash, meaningless. Shrita on a bird korban out of the base of Mikdash, bam, you're Chayev. How do we know that? Okay. It's a di- whatever, it's a different Gemara. You, you know, we learn it from a post. So, what the Gemara is saying is like, so why, therefore, is Shechit of a bird korban not going to make it not an Avela? Because it's a meaningful thing. If it's a meaningful enough Shechit to say you brought a korban out of the base of Mikdash, then therefore it's going to be meaningful enough to say you can't, you are not going to consider the animal an Avela. Okay? Because obviously there has to be some, it's sort of like the idea before that it tashered it. If it koshered it, it didn't make it a bit. This didn't kosher it, but it gave, but it was recognized as a meaningful act, and therefore it's not going to make it an available. Okay? So he says, Ashkan chutz. Now that's when you did a shchit on a bird, but chutz, it's not going to be an available because the shchita gave it weight and meaning, meaning enough to be, make you chayev. 
How do you know about a shechita of a bird inside isn't going to be in the veila? Okay, so no, because now we got the link, like we said before. That's stage two. Once you said shechita of a bird on the outside is a meaningful act. Now you can't make it an available inside because if the outside is meaningful, it's also going to be meaningful on the inside. There's not a hekish chazer on the hekish. I don't know. Anyway, Yehachi says the Gemara. It's going to start with the end, right? You just said that's mechayev karet and that isn't mechayev karet. So loshavu. Right. It's a roundabout way to go there. Well, you had to first prove that it was chayev karet. Oh, we know that. All right. All right. The Gemara says like this: Yehachi malak kachim b'chutz nami lo tilo shavu pnim ki b'chutz. Uh, one minute. Yeah, is that the question? Hold on. No, no, this is Kutchen. This is, wait, Moloch. No, we, yeah. now we're switching to Moloch. We're moving off of Shrita. Fine. Okay, so we got Shrita. Okay, let's do that. Shrita. Chulin bif chulin bif nim is not going to be nevela because chulin bechutz works. So it's not going to in, so if it's good on the outside, it's not going to make it nevela on the inside. Kachim, if it's malikas kachim, I'm sorry, shchitas kachim, bechutz is a meaningful act because it makes you chaya. And therefore, once it's a meaningful act on the outside, it's and it's not nevela on the outside, it's not going to be nevela on the inside. Good. Mm-hmm. Now we move back to malika. Okay, malikas kachim bechutz. Okay, which actually does make it. Okay, why don't we say it doesn't make it? Because the outside is bad, the inside is good. Malika's question between is good. So we've been saying if the inside and the outside aren't the same, it should not be an Avela. Okay, so how come here Malika's question Bachutz is an Avela? So the Gemara says like this I'm going to have Shimi Bara Ashi, Dunim Davashalobech Shera, Midavashalobech Shera. They ain't Dunim Davashalobech Shera, Midavashabech Shera. Okay, that you can you can compare two things that are being done like improperly. Okay, so meaning what? And here you can compare kachim b'chutz and kachim b'fnim. Okay, and those are both being done improperly, and you could sort of say, okay, even though it's improper, here it doesn't totally possible it, so it's not going to make it an available here. Whereas in this case, okay, we're not going to take a look at kachim at 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 kachim b'chutz and say. That's not an avela when you do it in the wrong way, because it's not an avela when you do it in the right way, right? When you do kachim b'fnim, you're doing it in the right way. So the link, the, the link of fnim b'chutz, we're not going to start from a case that's being done right. Well, you, you mean because of the shikret. Well, let's just finish this, okay? So the Gemara says, one minute. Um, so the Gemara says, "V'lo, but we not. Ratan yimi nain liyotze shim alu lo yerek shem liyotze kasher bebama." So all oh, this is a classic thing the Gemara likes throwing out. But don't we learn that something that was taken out of the environment of the base matrix and put in the base on the altar, you don't have to take it down because it's good at because it's good on a bama. So that's learning the, the status of something in the Beit Hamikdash from the status of something out of the Beit Hamikdash. So that you just said you're not allowed to do that. So the Gemara says, "No." That's not really learning from the halach of Obama. That's just learning because we have a pasuk and so on. And we said that before. Now, so the point is that you're not going to learn to say something done the right way or in the Beit Hamikdash is going to be. Uh, wait a minute. What are we saying? Um, hold on, I'm just gonna. Well, no, you forget which direction. You're not going to learn. From something done the right way in the Beit Hamikdash, that, that is not an avela shritas kachim bifnim to say something done out of the Beit Hamikdash and the wrong way is an avela. Okay, so you're not going to go from the right way in the Beit Hamikdash to change the status. You're, you're not going to use this to make something that is wrong right. Okay, but the problem is, is that, and I think this is what you're bothering me, you, Michael. I'm just, I'm just sort of processing it myself. Is that that seems to be what we did by the case of chulin bifnim, right? And we said since chulin out of the base of mikdash is good, we're going to say that in the base of mikdash it'll also be good. Well, by thought we're, we're trying to like you know figure out to begin with whether Malika in in, in the oaf in the base in the base of mikdash makes it available or not. Yeah, but we said we, we we address that we prove that. Anyway, I, look here's the point. Okay, kachim. Here you've got your kachim bachutz. Okay, and that's. In a way, it's a check because it's good to be machai of you for shchut So it's meaningful, okay? 
And once that's okay, then your kodshim bifnim is also going to be a check because of the length. Okay. Similarly, you have here the zoshchita. Okay. You have shchitas chulin bifnim, chulin achutz, and here's chulin bifnim. Okay. So since this is a check, because that makes it kosher, this is going to be a check and also not in the vela. Okay, so if it's good on the outside, it's going to be, you know, we first establish it's good on the outside, then it's going to be good on the inside. Okay? So so about. Whereas here, you've got, right, Malikas Kodshim. Bifnim, and here it's Bachot. Right? So Bifnim, we know it's good, and here it's no good. And what we want to say is, why don't we say here, inside is like the outside. If the inside is good, the outside should be good, okay? And the Gemara's answer, but I, what I think what I want the Gemara to be saying, although it's not in the language of the Gemara, because it just makes it more simple, is the answer is not Bechsheir or not Bechsheir, or it's maybe just what the Gemara means, okay, but it doesn't seem that way from the end question is, you don't use the fact that something is kosher on the inside to cash for something on the outside. In these cases, it was kosher on the outside, so we're going to say it's kosher on the inside. Here it's kosher on the inside, you don't want to say it's kosher on the outside. Okay, that's at least how I'd like to phrase it. The Gemara seems to be saying it a little bit differently. It seems to be saying Dabar Bechshero and Lo Bechshero, but to me that's a little complicated. Let's get on to the next Mishnah. Malak Venitz is Trefa. Yes. I, I, I'm just questioning why the outside should validate something on the inside. It doesn't validate as a, as a it. Principle. It's based on the link to Trefa yeah. that it shows that the status is going to be the same. Okay, but the only thing that's in a vela is something whose status is the same on the inside of the outside. So it doesn't like it's not validating, it's just demonstrating whether it falls into this category or not. Okay, Malak Venims is Trefa. Now we get to actually the Trefa issue that we were discussing. Now, here's the question in general. Okay, when you do a um, when you do a shrita on an animal and you find it's a Trefa, logically you could say, Well, isn't that like an Avela? Why? Because an avela, what is the halachic definition of an avela? And the term avela is like an animal that drops dead because, you know, out of disease or illness or whatever. But the halachic definition of a trefa, like we learned that malika normally should be a trefa, uh, an avela, the halachic definition of an avela is an animal that did not have a proper shrita. Okay? So if I did a shrita and there was a little nick in the knife and it made it an improper shrita, it's an avela. If you need a Jew to do a shrita and a non Jew does it, it's an avela. Okay, an avela is an animal that died through an improper shrita. If that's true, logically you should say, well, if there was an, a, a traif, if the animal was a traif and I shechted it, maybe it should also be an avela. Because even though I did the physical act of shrita, the shrita didn't make it permissible because it was a traif. Okay, so the answer is no. Normally, if you do a shrita on an animal, since the act of shrita was done properly, even if the animal is traif, the animal is not an avela and it doesn't cause tuma. Only an avela causes tuma. Okay, but what's the story by a bird? Here you have a debate both by Shkita and by Malika. All right? There's the opinion of Rebbe Meir. And Rebbe Meir says basically a bird is like a, an, a, an animal. And if you do a Shkita on a bird and it's a trefa, it's not an Avela. It's a trefa. If you do a Malika on a bird and it's a trefa. Now, here you could say one minute. If you did a Malika on a bird that's a trefa, that's like our earlier discussion. Maybe the same way if you did a Malika on a chicken or on a bird that's too young or in a or Ever, or you did it with a knife. So if you did a malik in a way that the animal didn't become kosher because of something physical about the animal, because it was a trefa, maybe that should be. It's not a malika of a korban. It's not enough in this korban category. And therefore, the malika makes it an avela. Because at the end of the day, you are doing a malika. So maybe like our whole previous discussion, when does a malika make something an avela? You could say, well, if it's a trefa, then the malika never was really in a valid context, and it makes it an avela. You could say that, right? Rabbi Meir says, no, whether you do a shrita on a bird that's a trefa or a malika that's on a korban that's a, tr- that's a trefa, it does not make it an avela. Okay, that's Rabbi Meir. Rabbi Huda's going to say, not only does malika on a bird that's a korban make it, on a tra- bird, korban trefa, make it an avela, and that makes sense because at the end of the day you did malika, okay, but even shrita on a normal bird that's a trefa makes it an avela. All right, so you have. They sort of argue both extremes. A logical position is a middle one, which we're not going to explore, which is a middle position of Reb Yossi. Reb Yossi says, shrita of a bird trefa is not an avela, because you did a shrita. 
Malika of a bird treifa is an Aveda because it's a Malika that didn't work. Okay? But, so let's take a look. Malak Vanim says treifa. He did Malika and it was a treifa. Mayor Omer, ain't a matama vesa blia. It's not an Aveda. Even though you did a Malika. Reb Yudo Omer matame. It, is, it uh, does cost too much. Now, so far, Reb Yudo is only saying this by a by, by, by Malika. I'm a Rebbe Mayor. I said, remember, Kava Chomer. In the veil, I make a from a from a large animal, in from a mammal. In the veil of behima shem at time of b'magu b'masa than a veil, which is weightier than a veil than the veil of a mammal, because that even if you touch it, even if you carry it, it's not this very narrowly defined thing of when you swallow it. So that's like a weighty tuma. Nevertheless, shchita z'mitaras and treif mitaheres treifas and mitumata. A shchita of a cow that's a treifa is not an veil. We can all agree on that. If that's true. Nivelas of she ain't even talking about masa. Nivelas of that if you touch it and carry it doesn't cost you much. The tumah is much narrower. Ain't udin she teish shchita some taras of treifa some mitu masa. So certainly the shchita of a bird treifa, which we haven't discussed yet. Now we're introducing it. The shchita of a bird treifa should make it a non nivela. Now, if you will concede to me that point that the shchita of a bird treifa makes it a non nivela, I'm going to now build from that to say even the malika of a bird treifa, of a cut, of a sacrifice bird treifa is a non nevela okay? And that I'm gonna do by a mamatzinu. So mamatzinu b'shchita so, shi mechmachshert al-achila, u'metares treifa so mitumasa. So I've just sort of proven to you by a kavachomer that the shchita of a bird treifa, it makes it a na, not tame, not a nevela. And why is that? Because shchita was the right act to be done with it, okay? So af so, so even the malika, which is normally what you do by a bird sacrifice to make it fit to be eaten or fit to be on the altar, since malika was what you were supposed to do, the same way shchita on a treifa is not a nevela, malika on a treifa for a korban is not a treifa. That's his argument, okay? What Rabbi Yehuda does not respond, okay? But Rabbi Yehuda actually disagrees with his basic assumption. Rabbi Yehuda actually feels that even shechita of a bird treifa is an avela, mm-hmm. all right? Now, Rabbi Yossi is like a middle position, okay? So you've got... Okay, you have shechitat behima treifa. There we can all agree that that is tahor. I'll just call it Tahor, not in the Vela. Okay? So comes comes along Rebbe Mayer, and Rebbe Mayer makes the Kava Chomer. Okay? This is a weighty Tuma. So, you know, Behima is weighty Tuma. Behima is weighty. Weighty Tuma. Okay? So if this is true, that it's Tahor, even though generally the Tuma here is weighty, Kava Chomer, that Shritat, you know, Oath. Trefa is the whore. That's stage number one. Okay? Because this is obviously an oaf nevela is less weighty. Then, mamatsinu, we're going to go from shritat oaf to mumikat oaf. Because shrita is the right act, so mumikat oaf, which is a korban, also of a trefa is also going to be tahor. So this is the weak link. Because you can say, give me a break. Even though mumika is the right thing, it's not a mamatsinu. The Malika is an act that normally makes something in a veil, okay? Which is which is sort of what Rabbi Yossi is going to say. But what is not explicit in the Mishnah is that this is okay. So this is Rabbi Meir. Is that Rabbi Yehuda basically disagrees with this? And Rabbi Yehuda actually says, "No, I say you're wrong here. I don't buy that. And I'm actually going to say that Shritat of Trefa is an Avela. okay?" I disagree with point one. The Yossi is going to sort of challenge point two. Okay? So let's take a look at what the commission says about Reb Yossi. Reb Yossi Omer, Daya Lavo Minadin, Daya Kinivet, 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 You had a Kal Vachomer here. Okay? So this whole thing rests. The, the basis of all your thing is the Shrita of Behemah. And since by the Shkita of a Behima, Malika net would always make it an Avela. By a Behima, there is nothing to get it out of an Avela other than Shkita. So since that's true, you can't go Shkita, Shkita, now you're going to go to Malika. You know they have this thing, what's called like a word chain? You change one letter at a time, and then you get to a completely, you know, each time it's a different word, and then you get to a completely different word. You're not allowed to do that. 
At the end of the day, this all rests back on the shechita of a behema. And since by behema only shechita saves it, by a bird only shechita is going to save it. So if Yossi says, I, I disagree with your mama. That Yehuda says, I disagree with your stage too. Even shechita makes it a devela. And Rabbi Yossi says, we'll use a different color. And Rabbi Yossi says, no. We can't, no. Only shechita. Only shechita saves you. And therefore, Malika is going to be a Nevela. Okay? So those are the two debates. Rabbi Yehuda, which is not explicit, debates point one, and Rabbi Yossi, the point, the right point, point two. Let's take a look at the Gemara. The Rabbi Meir, Lodarish Dayo, how could Rabbi Meir not agree to this Dayo point of Rabbi Yossi? Um, that idea that you can't exceed, based on a Kavachonia, your original source, okay, is a Doraita principle. Ditanya, midin kavachomer ketzad. This is like a listing of the hermeneutic principles. What does it mean to, like, what's in it? How do you do a kavachomer? Where do you, and where do you see that in the Torah here? Vayomer, Hashem Moshe, Vavia Yarok Yak Bifaneha, you know, just, just recently in the Barsha, right? If her father were to spit in her face by Miriam, wouldn't she be, wouldn't she be embarrassed? So now, you, wouldn't she be closed up for seven days? Here too, she has to wait out of the camp for seven days. The Gemara says, wait. If her father's spitting would embarrass her seven days, if God's going to show displeasure, obviously that's got to be more than seven days. Okay, so the Gemara says, um, So logically, God being dis- God showing displeasure should be 14 days. Yes, it's a Kavachomer, but you don't go beyond. The whole point of a Kavachomer is you're not, you, if you don't have license to go beyond the original, because then you, know, you can't prove anything beyond the original case. So therefore, you're limited to the original seven days. So anyway, so here too, if it all started from a kavachomer, or should you be a limited sheet and not and not and not malika? The funny thing is, is that you could say yes, the original kavachomer you only limited to shrita, but who says then? Like you know, that's how the gemara does, right? Chozer malamid beekesh, chozer malamid bemamatinu. But the gemara somehow feels that no, since the mamatinu, it's not one of these formal things like a hekesh or kavach or or gzeir shava. That at the end, it is ultimately has to find its justification. In the original Kavachome, and therefore you should be limited to that. So the Gemara says, um, You're right. Rabbi Meir didn't really fully do it from this Kavachome. He found he based himself on a pasuk. What's the pasuk? This is the law of the behema and the oath. Okay. What do you mean the behema and oath? Like it's all the same category. What do you mean? The behema, behema. I'll show you all the differences. Behema, matam of manga masa. If you want to talk about tumma, a behema when it's when it's dead in the veil, that's by touching by carrying. Of manga masa. Of is only doesn't have tumma that way. And they're like they're not even there's not even an overlap. They're mutually exclusive. Of matam of ganav beisabliya. Of is when you swallow it, and then it's not only you; it's the clothes you're wearing. Behema ain't matam of ganav beisabliya. An animal, if you were to stick a veil in somebody's throat, wouldn't cause that tumma. Ella, so what do you mean? Now this is the same Torah. They're not the same Torah. Every, they're completely distinct. Ella lo marlecha ma behema dava shemachira achila metar treifas mitu masa. The whole point of that pasuk is to tell you our halacha that they're similar in this way. That the act that makes a behema kosher lachila will say that even if it's a treifa, it's not. An, it doesn't become an avela. So if you did a shchita, av of dava shemachira achila so metar treifas mitu masa. So by a bird, if you did the act that under normal circumstances would have made it kosher, so you did a malika by a korban bird. So if you did a malika by a korban bird. It's be, that also makes it not an Avela. So you're right. I Meaning it's the same Mamatinu here, but it's not a Mamatinu just based on logic. It's a Mamatinu that's supported by a Pasuk. Okay, so this Mamatinu is actually based on Zot Torah Abehima Ve'aoz. You're right. Logically, logically the Mamatinu can fail it because it's limited. It's all based on a Kabachomer and limited to the original Kabachomer. But because it's not a mamatinu, it's a pasuk, we're allowed to take that next step. Okay, so that's Rebbe Meir. So now the Gemara says, like, <clears throat> Rebbe Yehuda, my taima. How about Rebbe Yehuda? Where does he get his idea? And again, not just that he doesn't like Malika, but that even the shechita of an oaf is going to be a Malika. It's going to be, shechita of an oaf is going to be a Nevela, an oaf treifa. Where does he get that from? Krach of Adar. He also has got himself a pasuk. Nevela treifa. Remember the pasuk we quoted on the Amad Aleph about the Tuma? It says, if you eat a Nivela and a Trefa, you're Tamei. Okay, so he's going to learn this. Let's see how he's going to learn that. Aram Yudah, Trefa Lam and Emra. 
Why does it say treifa? Because we know that, uh, well, let's start. So what's the scenario of treifa? That says if you eat it, it's going to be tamay. This actually works very nice for Rabbi Huda. Let's just pause for a moment, just say where he's going. But Rabbi Huda says, if, even if you shek the bird and it's a treifa, it's tamay like an avela. So he actually is the one that's able to read the pasuk like normally. It says if you eat an avela or a treifa, you're tamay. And he says, yes, even if you eat a bird that's a treifa, you're tamay, even if you shechted it. It's different than a behema. Behema that you shech that's treifa is not tamay. A bird that you shech that's a treifa is tamay. So actually, Rabbi Huda, like that is the pasuk. The pasuk says nevela and a treifa. Okay, let's see how he gets there. Okay, so here's a reason Rabbi Huda says shechita's oath treifa is a nevela because it says in the pasuk, the vela u treifa, or is it lo yochal Is that what it is? Is that, am I quoting it or am I making that up? What was it? Uh, no, I hear Tochal Nevela. I'm thinking of a different pasta. The Tamei Avad Aram. Okay. I share Tochal Nevela Utefa the Tamei Avad So he says, What are you talking about? It says, Nevela and Trefa causes Toma. I don't buy your Kavu Cholmer. I think even if you shack the bird, that's a Trefa. It's going to cause Toma. That's a Pasuk. Okay. It's hard to argue with that. Let's see what he says. Okay, Rav Yudah my time a cross because the darsh they love treifa. I'm Rav Yudah treifa lamin emer. Why treifa? So in treifa chaya harin veila amura. Now this is a funny th- phrase. Here's the way Rashi says it means. If normally there's a whole debate whether an animal that's a treifa will it normally will it, will, will it be able to like live out its life? You know, mm-hmm. all he has to find is like live for twelve months. If you normally assume that a treifa could live, so then even while it was a treifa, it was considered to be a totally living animal. Fine. How did it die? If then it, de- it did die as a result of its wound or died, then it's an avela. So you don't need a pasuk to tell me if a treifa died naturally without being shechted, that it's an avela, because it is an avela. It just died without being shechted. You treifa ain't a Let's say you say a treifa, as soon as it becomes a treifa, we see it as the walking dead. It's like, it's not going to live out its life. Then I might even want to consider it an avela while it's still walking around. So if, so Ella, it's like a little funny what the Havah mean is. Let's get to the punchline. Lahavi treifa shashachta, which is the pshat. If we're going to think that Nevela is an animal that died without shechita, so treifa is an animal that was shechted and was nevertheless a treifa. Okay? So he says, it says, Nevela u treifa. The treifa cannot mean an animal that died naturally without shechita, because then it would have been a Nevela. So a treifa has to be an animal that you shechted and that was found to be a treifa. Okay? And there you see, it's a pasuk. It tells you, I don't care what by, that's not true by a cow and a sheep and a goat or whatever. It tells you by a bird, it's a bizarre Allah by a bird anyway, that when you swallow it, you're tamay. So you know what? That's true also in terms of if it's a trefa. Uh, so what is it? In trefa, el havi trefa shechta shem etama. Okay. Amalei rachiz vi el meata, based on this, to see if you're going to link nivela and trefa based on tuma laws, let me ask you a question. It says, It says, don't eat the, the fat of an avail and treifa, but you can use it for any labor. And the drush of the rabbis of use it for any labor means you can even use it in the base of mikdash, means that it's not tamay. So basically, the upshot of this is only the meat is tamay and not the fat. You got it? But since it says do the, anything you want with the fat, just don't eat it, it means that the fat is not tamay. Hasam nami name. So let's use this logic. So again, we're going to say that the word trefa here means, I mean, basically, what we normally say trefa means is not an animal that died of its wounds, but an animal that you shechted that was found to be a trefa. Fine. So it's telling you the fat of a trefa is not tamay. Well, now we've got a problem. That sounds like the meat of a trefa is metame. But that's not true. We all agree to point one that a normal behemoth that you shechted that's a treifa is not metame. That everybody agrees to. Okay? V'hamar rav yud amar rav, v'am yilim v'mas nisitana, v'chiyya musmina behima. If an animal dies, okay, and then it says it causes tuma. Mixes behima metame, mixes ena metame. Some dead animals cause tuma, some do not. V'ezo zo, zo, v'ezo, zo treifa shechta. Okay, we all agree to point one. Everybody agrees that a normal animal that is shechted, that is a trefa, is not tamay. So now we've got a problem, though. If you're doing all of these learnings from the words nevela u trefa, et cetera, et cetera, 
So you've got a pasuk that says, right? The chilev nevela, the chilev, the chilev terefa, right? Yeyase lechom lacha. So which basically means yeyase lechom lacha means means what? Means that the chilev is tahor. Okay, that's what it means. So now, and the but implicitly, the basar is tame. But the basar of a trefa is not tame. So, right? So what do you do? I mean, it's not a question. What do you do with this word trefa here? If you literally say it means trefa, the same way Rabbi Yudah said literally by the bird it's trefa, it's a trefa that was shechted, and that's how we knew a bird that was a trefa that was shechted is tame. So say trefa here also means an animal that was shechted. And then you're going to say that it's Tamei, but that's not true. Uh, well, what, what did Rabbi Yudah intend originally, right? When we said, right. What trefa was he talking about there? A bird. A bird? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This bird, right, that's what I said. Everybody agrees that a behemoth trefa is Tahor. Rabbi Yudah says, I don't uh-huh. agree that a, that a bird trefa is Tahor, because this person by bird, is about bird, and that says a tray for Tamei. So now we're bringing a pasuk of, using the same logic to a pasuk about chelev and behema, which doesn't include some bird anyway. Right, so since Rebbe Huda chooses to read okay. tray for here, not as nevela, as literally a tray for that was shechted, and that tells him a bird tray for that was shechted is Tamei, so tell me also that an animal tray for shechted is Tamei, based on the chelev pasuk. Okay, so the Gemara says, um, so the Gemara says, So the Gemara says, okay, no, you're right. Here, we got, we're not going to say trefa means literally an animal that was shechted that was a trefa. What we're going to use a trefa to tell me is an animal that is, is a kosher animal. Okay, meaning, let me just take it in. Right, me not a type of animal that it matters if it's a trefer or not. My cow, it matters if it's a trefer or not. If it's a trefer, I can't eat it. My pig, it doesn't matter if it's a trefer. Because it, because what a trefer is fundamentally about is not tuma. A trefer is fundamentally about eating. So therefore, trefer my, only, does, only matters by kosher animals. Trefer doesn't matter by non-kosher animals. So trefer here doesn't mean trefer. Because then you're right. Then it would lead you to say that an animal that's a trefer is, is, causes tuma. Trefa here means we're talking about, bracket this whole thing, and this tells you we're talking about kosher animals. Non-kosher animals, okay? Okay, that's that's what it's coming to tell you. Okay, they're only by kosher animals, but but non-kosher animals, okay, one minute. Um, one minute. I'll tell you the chelev, the chelev is, is... One minute. Right. When do we say that the fat is tahor? By kosher animals. But by non-kosher animals, my pig, my dead pig, the fat is tameh. Okay? So anyway, that's what the word trefa here is to do. This halacha that the fat is tahor doesn't mean a literal trefa. This halacha that the fat is tahor is to tell you kosher animals. So if that's true, and presumably Reb Yud has to agree to that. So if that's true, we're going to go back here and challenge. How does Reb Yud read this bir- wor- pasuk about birds and tumah, whatever, to be literally a trefa. The word trefa should really just signifies that we're talking about kosher animals and not non-kosher animals. So the Gemara says, if that's true there, okay, um, so the Gemara says, hachanami, let's say, ute of tamei, shame demino trefa. So how do you learn trefa here to mean literally a trefa and a literal bird trefa doesn't cause, tu- uh, ca- uh, uh, causes tumor? No. Treif is a way of telling you we're talking about kosher birds. So the Gemara says, um, uh, the Gemara says, No, Reb Yudah already knows that non-kosher birds are not included. How do you know this? Here's a bizarre lacha. That if it's a non-kosher bird, it doesn't cause tuma. Maybe a dead non-kosher bird that you swallow causes tuma. Tamad Lamar. Nevela utrefa lo yochal. Nishay so mishumbal tochal nevela. Not to say she nisho mishumbal tochal nevela. Elo mishumbal tochal tamei. So we've got nevela and trefa. Okay, that's I think lo yochal and tamabam. So yeah, let me just say this. 
sometimes, let's I'll try to pull this together. Sometimes we have to concede, everybody concedes that the shrit of a behemoth that's a trace is trouble. So what does this mean? The schelem mela chelem trefa, which I could infer that a, the, be, the meat of a trefa is tamay. No, the word trefa here doesn't mean trefa. The word trefa here means kosher animals, okay? That this halach applies only to kosher animals. The fat of non-kosher animals is not. That's what that means, okay? Um, um, so, sometimes the word trefa means, or here it means kosher animals. So why don't I say, so what's your Yudah's argument that the shrit of a trefa bird is, is tamay? Because it says, Nevela and Trefa is Tamein. He reads Trefa literally. So we say, but why not say Trefa just means we're talking only about kosher animals? And he says, no. How do I know we're talking about kosher animals? I get that already from the word Nevela. Nevela means an animal that is forbidden to eat, be eaten only by virtue of it being a Nevela. As opposed to non kosher birds, they're already forbidden. The next question okay. is obvious, right? Well, let's not yeah. worry about that. So let's just finish here for today. Okay, so this tells you that this halach applies only to kosher animals. Somehow, the, okay, only kosher animals is from the word nevela. And therefore, what are you left to learn from trefa? Trefa can't be telling you kosher animals. So for him, trefa is literally trefa. Shita's and a shechita's trefa of a bird, sorry, a shechita's trefa of a bird actually is tamay. Okay, a shechita's behema trefa is tahor. But here it says nevela with trefa. Bottom line is, Rabud is just reading the pasuk. It says Nevela Utrefa wants to read it to be referring to a bird. He's saying the Pusuk is explicitly telling you that even a bird a bird that's shechted, that's a trefa, does cause tumah. Okay, so if Yehuda disagrees with this, this might be a nice kavachom there, but the Pusuk tells you otherwise. And Rabbi Yossi tells you, no, I agree to this. I just say you can't get to Malika. I don't buy your mama to you. So it's a three-way debate. Okay, we'll end here. Is this meat still uh, not allowed? What? Is the meat of the uh, trefa that was that received shchit that's still not allowed to be eaten? Is the meat of an avela? Not avela, trefa. Meat, slower, you said it, it, it's no longer causes tumor, but you, yes. you, can, you can't eat the meat, right? Yeah, uh, of an avela of an or trefa, you can't eat the meat, right? right.